When creating a game, it is often necessary to be able to create LODs, or levels of detail, for your objects. In this tutorial, we're going to quickly run through the requirements for creating an LOD object and getting it to work in-game so that we jump from one version of the object to another as we move away from the camera. What this means is that as we move away from the camera, the object will simply switch from the higher resolution version, or the higher poly version, to a lower poly version. In this case, we're also going to switch the material at the second LOD phase. So once it reaches the LOD 2 and LOD 3, we will also be swapping the materials out as well. This is done simply by applying our materials to those two objects in a smaller form. At LOD 0 and 1, I'm using a high resolution material, and LOD 2 and 3, I'm using a low resolution material. Effectively, LOD 1, 0 and 1 are going to have a 2048 texture, and 2 and 3 will use a 1024 texture. This is done by simply using a different shader for each of those LODs. So LOD 0 and 1 are going to use one shader, LOD 2 and 3 will use another shader. If we look in our hypershade panel, we can see that I have a couch material that is the high resolution version, and a couch material that is the low resolution version. These were simply applied to the corresponding LODs. So LOD 0 and 1, again, are going to use the high resolution material, or couch material, and LOD 2 and 3 will use couch material small. It is important to realize that each of these are the same object lying on top of each other with different levels of detail. So to illustrate this, I'm just going to simply show you what it looks like if I were to separate these apart. So here is LOD 0, and I'm just going to slide this out of the way, and then I'm going to grab LOD 1, and I'm going to slide this one out of the way, and then I'm going to grab LOD 2 and slide this one out of the way, and now you can see that all of these are effectively the same object. They're just lying on top of each other with different levels of detail. This one being the, the most dense, this one being a little less dense, LOD2 being somewhere in the middle, and finally we have our very low, low poly version of our couch. So this is effectively what we're doing. All of our models are going to be lying on top of each other, and they're going to be occupying the same space. And what we're going to do in game is we're going to switch from the low, low poly version up to the high poly version, depending on the distance from the camera. Okay, so I'm just going to put all of these back together again, so that they're sitting on top of each other where they should be. And now my object is ready for exportation. So let's go ahead and do that. Let's select our object and hit File, Export Selection. And I'm going to go ahead and overwrite my, my version, which is Leather Couch, LOD. And I'm going to go ahead and replace it. So now I'm ready to bring it into Stingray, and we should be good to go. See you in Stingray. Once inside of Stingray, we're just going to need to navigate and create a folder for us to bring our model into. So let's go ahead and do that now. Let's start with Content, and then go Models, and then right-click and create a folder. And we're going to call this Couch LOD Example. And once the folder is created, we can double click on that and go import and let's go ahead and navigate to our model. I'm going to go ahead and import my leather couch LOD file that I just exported and I'm going to go ahead and go import. Once imported we should be able to see our model as well as our materials and the textures all imported as expected. Now that the model is successfully imported we can go ahead and place that in our level. So let's go ahead and do that Let's grab the Place tool and select our object, and we can just place that anywhere we would like. All right. So now that it's been placed, let's take a look and see what we have. As we can see, all of our objects are still lying on top of each other. So just like in Maya, all of the objects are now sitting on top of each other with all four of the LODs showing at the same time. This isn't really what we want and certainly isn't the most optimal. In order to set up those LODs so that they do work the way we want them to, we're going to have to go into the unit and go ahead and start uh, setting up the LODs. So let's go ahead and do that now by selecting our unit and double clicking it. Once double clicked it'll launch the unit editor, in which case we're going to have the opportunity to set up a bunch of different things. In our case we're going to set up our levels of detail. So 
let's go over to the tab, Levels of Detail, and let's start to take a look and see what we've got going on over here. When we first come to the Level of Detail panel, you may notice that it is asking for a LOD object. This is going to be our overarching container by which our orientation and bounding information is set. In this example, we can use any of our LOD states as they will all contain the same bounding and orientation information. So let's go ahead and create our LOD object. So select Leather Couch LOD3 and go ahead and hit the New LOD Object button. This will then bring up a dialog box, in which case we can name our LOD object. In our case, let's just call it Couch and hit OK. As you can see, it automatically fills the orientation node and bounding information with Leather Couch LOD3. We are now set and ready to begin creating our different LOD states. To create an LOD state, simply press this folder icon, which is New LOD Step. This step we're going to want to set for between 80 and 100 percent of the screen height. Okay, so let's type in 80 to 100 and press OK. We now created our highest LOD state. This is going to be when the object is taking between 80 and 100 percent of our screen height. So once done, we can now go ahead and select our Leather Couch LOD0, which is our highest resolution, because when 80 to 100% is taken up, it's pretty much the only object we're going to see. So we're going to want that to be very resolute. So 80 to 100%, let's add LOD0 and press the Add button. Once done, we're going to now create our next LOD step or state. And we're going to set this one to between 60 and 80. Once done, we're going to select our LOD1 and add it. Once we have our second LOD state done, we're going to go ahead and add our third one, which will be between 40 and 60. And we're just going to add LOD2 to that one. And finally, we're going to add our last one, which is going to be between 0 and 40. and we're going to go ahead and add LOD3 to that one. Okay, if we toggle through these we should now see that between 80 and 100 we have LOD0, 60 and 80 we have LOD1, 40 and 60 we have LOD2, and 0 and 40 when it's very very small it'll be loading our lowest resolution model. Okay, so that's pretty much all we have to do now and we should be pretty much set in here. So let's go ahead and go File, Save to ensure that our changes are kept, and let's close the unit editor window. Switching back to the level viewport, we should now be able to test our, our changes. So let's go ahead and first select our object so we can see our wireframe. And as you can see, we are getting the high resolution version as we're very close, but we don't have the problem that we had earlier where there were multiple versions sitting on top of each other. Now we only see the high resolution version, and if we step back we should be able to see that at a certain point the model will change. As you can see it is now switching to LOD1, and if we keep stepping back it'll switch to LOD2, and if we keep stepping back further it'll step to LOD3. Now that we have tested it with the wireframe enabled, let's go ahead and deselect our object and just do a quick test to make sure that it still looks good when we step back from the object. As you can see, even at far distances, we're still looking quite good, and moving in and out doesn't seem to cause any major problems. I think we're going to call this done, and we now know how to create multiple LOD steps as we zoom in and zoom out from our object.